I just recorded a few minutes actually, and I'm like, you know, I gotta, I gotta keep these more in line. So, on the way to the gym today's chest. Um, after I tell you guys about, uh, I'll clear up some of the videos, um, some of the shit that's been going on. But um, today's chest, we're gonna talk about meal timing because meal timing I think is relative to wherever you guys are at. If you're just starting off in the gym, or and you've kind of been misled by some bullshit that you read online, or if you're, you know, kind of like in my phase where I've been working out consistently for over 10 years and you got a pretty good idea of nutrition and training and you kind of, you, you know, know what to do for the better, you know, for the most part, but you know, you're like, Hey, meal timing has been one of those things I've never really learned too much on. Or if you're that person who like has no fucking clue what I'm even talking about. Um, we'll talk about that here in a second, then chest, but, um, and like a good chest routine. So to clear up really quickly, um, I'm going to try to make my videos a little more condensed my wife always kind of jokes around with me like man your car talks are like i mean you guys can see my fucking videos i had an issue if you guys look yesterday and today i posted like seven or eight videos total just in the last two days because i've been having an issue of before the cut started so the videos i've been posting i haven't posted any videos yet from when the cut started until now so um all the videos you guys have been seeing on there are like pre-cut videos um, so I've just been like dumping them out there with random titles because I was recording like my first video of this cutting series was when I did that grocery haul. I posted that about two weeks ago and basically in the last two weeks from then until a couple of days ago before the cut started, I was, um, recording like every single day as well as like some stuff in the house and kitchen and food and stuff. But, um, I'm like, look at the couple behind me, like they're. They both look so unhappy. They're not saying a word. The wife is like, the husband's just like, anyway, I'm not judging, but I just, you know, I hope that's not me. You know, me and my wife aren't ever going to be like that. But anyways, um, so I made like eight, nine videos, and like, you know, 20, 30 minutes on the way to the gym, 20 minutes on the way back and a couple of clips in the gym. Um, I don't like to record just because I'm like kind of self-conscious in the gym until I'm like leaner, you know? Right now, my cockiness in the gym comes from my size and strength. You know, I'm about 6'1", started my cut at about 250, um, and you know, I'm, I, I can deadlift you know, my most, not my PR, but like my heaviest I've done to this day is 455. Um, incline bench, I, you, you know, I, I hit 275 for a few. Uh, incline barbell, I throw around the 120s and incline dumbbell. Uh, front squat, 275, 315 in that range. And then pretty much every machine I use to stack on. So really strong. Um, so that's where my cockiness kind of comes from in my bulk state. But as I get leaner, I'm still going to stay strong. I've always been naturally strong. Not even being cocky. You can, even my friends from high school and stuff. Like I've always been just known for being just naturally strong. Partially because I started working out very young. Uh, but I've always ate a lot of you know food, like protein food. Just eating like Chipotle like, all the time and rice and beef like for the last 15 years. Just a lot, a lot of protein and, and higher carb food. So when you do that for decades and, you know, over, I know, I know I'm only in my mid twenties, but still when you do it for over 10 years, you, you build some good strength. Um, also genetics plays a part in it too, but, um, and about six one, so about six one ish, about two fifty when I started so now, um, this Saturday. So, you know, four or five days from now, we'll do my first week's weigh in. Um, we'll see where I'm at weight wise, but I'll start recording some more in the gym clips here down the road. But, uh, I don't know where I was going with that. The point I'm trying to make is I was recording a lot and I wasn't uploading them. So I'm, dump, I'm like dumping out all the videos. I'll upload three or four more tonight probably. And then starting tomorrow, um, I'm going to upload as I record. So I'll record the video and that night I'll edit it really quick on iMovie. Put the, you know, do my editing, put the uh, intro in there and then throw it up there. I'll try to do it every single day to keep my phone storage clear. I had like 50 gigabytes on my phone, like 110 gigabytes on my computer of just videos. That's how long it was. Um, anyways, important part of the, this video, um, meal timing. So for me and, and many other lifters who are experienced and, and people who've been, in, you know, somewhat keen to nutrition and dieting for a pretty grip, a good grip of time, pretty lengthy period of time <clears throat> and have done successful bulks and cuts not like gain 10 pounds, lose 10 pounds, <coughs> but an actual successful cut. Let me make sure this fucking thing's still on. There's, you guys can't really tell, 
Um, there's two blue lights right there at the bottom. It is all, the first blue light indicates that the... <coughs> sorry, this went down the wrong pipe. The first blue light indicates that the mic is on. And the second blue light indicates that it's connected to the receiver, which is on your guys' side. But uh, meal timing is bullshit. That's going to be my blanket statement. I got a pretty cool fit on today. Um, you, know, you got the kid super pants on. The new custom Nike or uh, Converse All-Star... I forgot which one it was again. I got them custom from Pittsburgh again. I've um, got a cool Alphalete t-shirt underneath here for chest. And then I got this cool top here for my warm-ups. <clears throat> but um, maybe you guys can see that car. It's kind of cool. But meal timing is bullshit, right? I know some people are like, oh, you got to wake up and you got to eat at this time. The best optimal is eat before this time of the day and eat at this time before the gym. And once you get home, you have to eat within an hour. Otherwise, you're going to lose your gains. And then you, have to, you can't eat past a certain time. You can't sleep and you're not going to recover properly. All that stuff is bullshit, right? Yes, obviously we're not idiots and stupid. If you don't eat in the morning, you're probably gonna not you're probably gonna be more tired throughout the day. If you have higher carb in the morning, you probably have more energy throughout the day. If you eat more protein after the gym, you're probably gonna absorb it and assimilate a little more into your body. Those things are just common knowledge if you have any like, basic diet, you know, understanding, nutrition understanding. I don't meal timing to me as long as you're hitting your calories on a daily basis somewhat consistently or not somewhat very consistently you're going to be fine but the only reason meal timing is so important to me right now is when i'm dieting right so right now my last cut meal timing when i'm bulking i don't really give a shit about meal timing i try to have a you know two or three bigger meals throughout the day one earlier on one sort of around the workout time and then one before bed um or around dinner time, maybe a snack before bed. But it, and meal timing to me only become crucially important when I'm cutting because I'm a I'm a person who likes to eat a lot of food, right? I'm six one, about two fifty, like I said. So you know, pretty at least at the start of my cut. Now I'm, I'm going to be pretty good, you know, good amount less than that. But um, you know, so I, I like to eat a lot. I'm, I'm a snacker. I'm a binger. Like I like to eat food, like most people do. So and I'm not afraid to admit it. Um, but you know. I only care about meal timing in a cutting phase because it – oh, fuck. I'm going fast as shit. But look, I'm on, on the side of this car. But generally speaking, it only really matters in the sense of you want to have pretty equal – equally – and when I say equal, I'm, I'm talking in, in terms of volume and calories, meals kind of evenly spread out throughout the day in a cutting context. So you're not aggressively hungry at any certain point throughout the day. Right. So in the morning, I'm not trying to slam a thousand calories. so I don't have to eat till dinner. And on the contrary, I'm not trying to starve myself so I can have 1500 calories dinner and, and blow up at night. I'm not trying to do either of those because I will say that meal timing is bullshit, but you don't want to stuff yourself at really any meal to the point of like you're uncomfortable. Right. So my my cutting my breakfasts are typically 350 to 450 calories. But they're very voluminous because I'm in a, you know, when I'm cutting, I'm focusing more on my fibers, my micros, and more vegetables. So, for example, my breakfast this morning was, it's going to sound like a lot, um, for 414 calories was, um, it was about uh, 60 grams of carbs, about 6 or 7 grams of fat, and about 32 grams of protein, 414 calories. I had uh, a cup of broccoli. So two cups of broccoli. I just steam. I don't use ranch or anything. I just steam the broccoli and use salt and pepper. Um, two servings, so 92 grams of egg whites, one whole egg, one packet of the Star Kiss, like the uh, buffalo flavored tuna. One of the net carbs, so it's only two grams of net carbs. Tortilla wraps. I don't. I don't track net carbs. I track car, my diet coach. Unfortunately, if you only had me tracking net carbs, I would do so, but. Um, he said, no, we got to track all your carbs. So, um, so that tortilla and then, uh, my liquid IV and then my ghost, my greens, my, you know, greens I have every morning. So greens in terms of liquid, I had my ghost green. So ghost, I have the guava berry flavor. It's the best flavor. Every other flavor is shit. Guava berry is awesome. So those ghosts, you know, ghost, the brand ghost, same company is on here. Uh, ghost there. Ghost greens, uh, my liquid IV, my 40 ounces of water. So this is already going to put me at about 100 ounces when I finish this, and I'll have another one later on. I'm having about three of these a day, about a gallon. 
Um, so I had my ghost, a, a cup of that, so probably 10 ounces of water in there, uh, maybe 12 ounces. My liquid IV, another 40 ounces of water with my uh, lemon-lime sugar-free liquid IV. Then uh, two servings of egg whites, one whole egg, one whole packet of the buffalo-flavored tuna, um, one of the tortillas, and two cups of broccoli. It's a lot of food, very voluminous, for 414 calories. <laughs> and like 30, I think it was 32 grams of sugar, 31 and a half grams, but 32 grams of sugar, uh, 60 grams of carbs, and only 6 grams of fat. <clears throat> so, and that's how I kind of want my meals to be structured. You know, higher protein, moderate to high carb, and then lower fat. Because I'm only having, I think, 56 grams of carbs a day, or sorry, holy shit, that would be horrible. 56 grams of fat per day. Um, that 175 pro, 190 protein, one, 190 protein, 175 carb, and then 55 fat. So um, for me, and this is based off of over a year of working with my diet coach now, so like we have my body kind of down to a T. Um, I'm on a high carb or high protein, uh, moderately high carb, and then low fat macros is what works for me. Now, yes, in the context, everybody wants more fat in their diet and more fucking carbs, but to lose weight, you got to suck it up sometimes. So I'm going to finish this while I finish talking to you guys really quickly. I did have this, by the way. Uh, this one's badass. The Quest. This is the cookies and cream. Um, again, these aren't going to make the best for macros. No protein bar is going to be good, even plant-based, even keto. Keto. 180 calories, um, 9 grams of fat, 17 carb, and 18 protein. So not bad, but not great. So just something I like to snack on. So... Um, I already had my dinner plan that I had about 400 calories left still. So I already tracked everything. So this will be part of that. And then I'll have another 250 calories left to have as a snack even after dinner, which is cool. Um, but so meal timing is only important during a cut because I, I want to stay more full equally throughout the day. In previous years, before I hired my diet coach last July, so July of 24 or 23. So I've been working with him now for 13 months. Um, I had a backwards. I was just I would starve myself in the first half of the day, and then have like a moderate lunch, and then a huge dinner, and then a whole bunch of fucking snacks before bed. And in your head, you think that's not a big deal, but it was because I was binging at night. I was binging at night, so I was binging at night, overeating, and always eating a calorie surplus when I was trying to diet. The idea behind that, why it's flawed, is because my I have four. So this is custom to me. So keep that in mind. I have four meals a day. Meal one, I'm not one of those people who wakes up like incredibly starving, so we kind of push my first meal back a little bit. If you want to have your first meal like 6 a.m. right when you wake up, that's fine. But my first meal is 8 to 10 a.m. Meal two is between 12 and 2 p.m. Meal three is 6 to 7 p.m. And then meal four is 9 to 10 p.m. The reason I have it structured like that is because I like eating a lot. Of I, I kind of binge at night, so I get hungry before bed. Um, especially when I wasn't eating breakfast or lunch, I would get really hungry before bed and then I would just eat bullshit like Taco Bell and stuff, um, <clears throat> you know, previous years. So my first meal, I'm not hungry when I first wake up. So I wake up, I have my liquid IV, my hydration right away. And then I go do my cardio for about 30 to 45 minutes because I got, I got to get 10,000 steps a day. And that's, a, that's what my, my program has. Um, so meal one is eight to 10 meal two, 12 to two and so on and so forth. Like I said, but just customizing that first meal, I have 8 to 10 because I don't wake up starving. So I can wait a couple hours after I wake up before I have my first meal. And then my last meal, my meal four, is between 9 and 10 p.m. Um, and that's not incredibly rigid. Like if I miss – if if it's 10.30, oh, I can't eat my first meal now. Right? That's not how it is. It's just a, a general – you know, a general guideline for me to follow. Um, and I try to hit it to a T because it works. But uh, meal four, the reason that, that it's between 9 and 10 p.m. is because he just it's just simple stuff. He's like, hey, man, if you always are eating before night, let's move that fourth meal back a couple hours so you can have that last meal about 9 or 10 p.m., get three or 400 calories later on so you don't go to bed starving and wake up in the middle of the night and want to go binge in the closet or binge in the in the pantry. Binging in the closet is a whole other topic. No, I'm kidding. Um, but that was something I was doing. So um, <clears throat> that's kind of my, my – why I think – for me, meal timing is important for me specifically when I'm cutting because I'm hungry as hell all the time. So when I'm cutting, especially those first that first month or so, kind of getting back into the diet mindset, it's just really important for me to focus on meal timing. Um, so I'm eating three or 400 calories in meal one, maybe four or 500 in meal two, four or 500 in meal three, and then five or 600 in my, or sorry, 
I can have meal one be about three or four hundred calories, meal two about three or four hundred calories, meal three, which is six to seven p.m. after the gym, about five or six hundred calories, and then it leaves me with about four hundred ish calories left. Like I just said, actually, ironically enough, a few minutes ago, um, for my last meal, so I can have like some nice little a protein bar, a banana or an apple, maybe a, a bowl of a protein cereal, and have you know three or four hundred calories before bed. So I'm equally fed kind of throughout the day. So there's no point where I'm like really starving. I don't wake up starving. I'm not starving throughout the middle of the day and I'm not wanting to binge before bed. That's what I think about meal timing is in the sense of saving yourself from being fucking starving at any point throughout the day. That's why meal timing is important psychologically. But in terms of the way your body works, um, maybe some medical dietitian out there will say, no, you're wrong because if you eat after 8 p.m., you're fucked. <laughs> then in that case, you know, it is what it is. It's my word against theirs. That's what works for me. And I have the results to prove it. So, um, but that's just the whole point of dieting and nutrition is what works for you. Follow that. So that's why I've been working with my diet coach, Brian Piranha, uh, for the last 13 months, because he knows what works for me. And we've trial and errored our way to, to success. So now start my bulk at 250. you know, when I did my first weigh in a little bit ago, um, you know, this Saturday morning will be my, my next weigh in and I'm going to see the scale. I, I don't even have to get, I don't even have to think. I know it's going to be the first week or two. I'm typically about three to five pounds down. All right. Sorry about that, guys. When I get to the gym, I always turn off the Wi Fi because it try, the Wi Fi here just doesn't work. There's no internet, or at least it's like so slow that it never ever works. You can't even text on it like iMessage. So I always turn it off when I get here, but I'm like close enough. I'm like in the parking lot literally as we speak. Whatever. Um, so try connecting and then it like popped up my screen. So sorry about that. But what I was saying is meal timing is only important um, for me when I'm cutting because I want to be equally fed throughout the day. So um, now, of course, I want to bias like, okay, in my head, I'm like, okay, I'm going to the gym at 5 p.m. today. So when I have my second meal, which is between 12 and 2, that's a couple hours before the gym, I'm going to want to maybe have a little higher carbs in that meal versus like if I had my breakfast or whatever. Right, because carbs, we know, is is glycogen. It breaks down as glucose and, and stores the glycogen in your muscles. That's what gives you energy throughout the day. And then, like fructose, is stored in your liver. So you want to kind of stay away from that sort of stuff, like different sugars and gums and stuff. But um, uh, yeah. So that's pretty much that, guys. I'm gonna hop in the gym. I'm gonna finish this. Let my phone charge for a few. Go stretch, warm up, and then we're gonna hit chest. Uh, I'm gonna go kind of hard today and just see what my shoulder kind of feels like. Um. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. We're going to go hit chest and uh, talk to you guys on the way out.